Twinsy Knit. My name is Rachel and I'm Jessica and normally on this channel we do knitting updates in kind of a podcast format so like what we're working on, what we finished recently, but today we thought it would be nice to sit down and do kind of a like knit and chat and just talk about some questions that we get and uh, maybe new questions that people have submitted. Uh, we probably won't get to everything but we just thought it would be nice to have a little bit of time for that. Before we get started, we'll mention what we're wearing. So, do you want to go first? Yes, I am uh, wearing the Sunday sweater by November Knits. And I knit it in San Nascarn, uh Sunday, Sunday sweater in Sunday, <laughs> um, in the color almond. And is that right? Almond? That sounds right. I think that's right. And the tinsel mohair in the same color. And then the black version of the Santa Scar and same yarn. And I'm wearing, I had to look it up because it's been a long time since I've knit this sweater, but it is sweater number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. So it's definitely one of her older patterns. It's knit in all ribbing. And to be honest, I know there's a slight difference between the front and the back, but I couldn't tell this morning when I was getting dressed which one was the front or the back. So I may be wearing it backwards. Just to say. I, I tried it on both ways and this way it felt a little bit better so I'm assuming <laughs> it's the front. Um, but I knit this in uh, Filth Alana by Arweta and my only complaint about it is it is one of those sweaters that has like this like little snack bib right Yeah there. I started that knit and then I was like not sure if I liked it. <laughs> yeah so sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't. It kind of just depends on the day but I was like eh it's like a lazy Sunday so it's it's fine for today. I just probably wouldn't wear it to I don't know work or somewhere where I need to feel a little bit more polished because it does fit kind of odd. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> but what are you working on? Um I went back to a very old work in progress that I abandoned for a while. So I started the Margot Top by Gregoria Fibers back in like September, I think. And it was around that season where you could tell fall was going to come in and this is a summer knit. And I was like, mm, no, I'm just going to save it. And now I think I'm starting to feel spring in the air. So I decided to go back to this work in progress. I'm holding it upside down, but it's the same texture throughout. Um, and you were working on... Um, I'm just doing a little pair of red socks here. This is the sport weight yarn by Moondrake that we picked up recently. We both picked up a couple of skeins. Yeah, I'm of it, so excited so. to cast that on. <laughs> yeah. So I'm using mine to my first skein to make a pair of socks, and then I talked about doing a soapy shawl with the other skein. I might change my mind on that. I'm kind of thinking now I might do a hat. I, but I'll probably have to like buy a matching mohair. <laughs> Can you hear Conan in the background? One of the questions that we got was if we could talk about our cats. Do you want to grab Conan? So we record at my house. If you ever hear someone in the background, this is Conan. He is a very large, somewhat overweight Berman cat. I think a lot of people think he looks like a ragdoll, but he's a Berman. He is very large for a Berman and very loud. <laughs> He's very loud. And um, our cats are somewhat related. So Jessica has... I have Conan's grandbaby, Pepper, is one of my cats. Pepito. Yeah, little Pepito, the little squish. And then the other cat that I have is named Opie. Yes. Um, and Opie's a Berman too, but he's not related to either of them. He's just kind of on his own. But Conan's like, I'm ready to go now. Conan, say goodbye to the people. My cats are not this big, though. They're both about nine pounds, so they're... Yeah, they're, they're significantly smaller than, than Conan. And they're also much quieter. Like, I don't know why Conan yells so Conan much. Conan is loud. Like, I think he's learned that he can, like, yell at you and you'll <laughs> give him stuff. Whereas, like, I don't do that with my cats. If they're yelling at me, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> he bullies us. <laughs> so, yeah, if you ever hear him, he's fine. He's probably just wanting treats. Yeah. So, I feel like I have had hair on my face now. Before we get into more knitting type questions that were submitted, we did get a question to just generally like talk more about ourselves, so our personal life and things like that. Yep. Um, obviously within reason we don't want to like share everything on the internet, but is there anything that you would like expand upon? Um, I think in our 
first or second, probably our second episode. Don't go back and watch it. <laughs> we, were, we were not great about editing. We're like, you know, we just didn't have stuff figured we're out. We're still not like great, but we've gotten yeah. a little better. <laughs> but I'll kind of share some of the stuff that we talked about then, which is that we are both 28. We don't live together, but we live close in the Kansas City area. Um, we're both married, and I am an art teacher. I'm an analyst. And we have been knitting for pretty much our whole lives. Our mom taught us when we were very, very young, and we never stopped. But college is when we got really into knitting. And now we have cats and yarn, and we're ready for retirement, but life has we, other plans. We <laughs> kind of got many years to go. Before. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else that yeah, we could share. I don't know. It is funny. I do feel like we have really different jobs, which is, which has been interesting because I feel like in a lot of other areas of our lives, we followed really similar paths. So the fact that we picked such different career yeah. options, I think was kind of interesting. And it's funny how that played out. Cause I think if you had asked me in like high school or college, maybe like towards the end of college I kind of realized but like our freshman year I would have been like oh yeah we'll probably end up doing something kind of similar yeah not at all <laughs> not at all <laughs> my kids do know about you um partially because I tell them on the first day like I have a twin sister you know a little bit about myself and partially because a couple of them have seen you at like Ulta or Target or, yeah like, you know around town yeah and they just absolutely think it'd be hilarious for you to sub my class. I'm like, I don't think you guys know what you're I, asking I for. I don't think I can handle that, to be honest. But it is funny. Yeah, I'll like be in like public places in the town that you live. Because I, I don't live in the same town, but like I'm here a lot, you know. So yeah, um, yeah I'll like be out and about and I'll see like middle schoolers like whispering about me. And sometimes like, sometimes I just ignore it. And sometimes I'm like, hey, like, that's my sister, like, <laughs> you know, what's always so funny, too, is, like, I'll show a picture of us on the first day, and the sixth graders who are coming in and don't know me at all, they're like, oh my gosh, you guys look alike, and then my eighth graders will be like, that's you, they can tell, yeah, so, because they've been with me for, like, that'll be their third year already, and so, yeah, they can tell the difference, <laughs> yeah, I feel like the older we've gotten, the less we look alike, and the people who know us, like, no, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's one of those situations where, like, when you first see us, you'll be like, wow, they look alike, and then after 30 minutes, you're like, oh, actually, not really. Yeah. <laughs> People do ask us a lot if we're identical or paternal. We and don't know. The, yeah, the answer is we don't know. You have to do a blood test, which we've not done. No way, I don't see us doing that. I don't think we care yeah. that much. No. <laughs> so, um, let's get into some knitting questions. Sure. Yeah. Okay, one of the questions that we got a lot was, what are your top three favorite knits? Do you have any? Ooh, you should go first, because I need to think about it. Okay. Um, I've thought about this one, so I, I think okay. I have my answer. I'm prepared. <laughs> and I'm going based on not, like, what I wear the most, but just my favorite knits, like, the ones that I'm most proud of and, and would want to keep or redo if something happened to them. Uh, so the first one would be the Pitch Co. by Emily Green. It was a pattern for Brooklyn Tweed, and so I used Shelter in the color Wood Smoke, which I think is their worsted weight, like, light, yeah. lightly spun. Uh, it's just a beautiful pattern. Like, it's a really thick coat, but there's a lot of really good details in it, like the way that the cables start in the ribbing and that they go up to the pockets I really love. And I think it was my first cardigan I made that I didn't have to go back and like pick up stitches because the it doesn't even have a button band like it doesn't have buttons to close it's just like an open front cardigan but that's all knit together in one piece which is really nice I say one piece it's knit like the back and then the two front panels and then seamed together but the the what would traditionally be like a button band is just knit along with the front seamed pieces so it's just a really beautiful cardigan. It's so easy to throw on over everything, and I just really love it. And I was so proud of it when I made it, because I think it was one of my first patterns I made that was listed at, at advanced level. And I was really scared. I was like, oh, can I even do this? But it was really not that bad. I do really want to make that one. Yeah. That one, and I think what you're going to name, you have a second one on this list that is high on my priority list. Yeah. The second one's also a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. It's the Spenson Pullover by Jared Blood. 
it's just a beautiful cabled textured cardigan and it's another one that I was just really proud of when I finished it. It's also knit in pieces. I don't know why I used to do so many seamed pieces. I don't really do as many nowadays, but I used to knit a lot of seamed garments. And so it's another one that's knit in pieces, but it has these really beautiful saddle shoulders that I really love. And I just, I'm a sucker for a good white cabled pullover. <laughs> I remember at one point, I don't know how this came up, but I was like, there's a fire and you can only say one knit. What are you grabbing? That one. <laughs> and that was your I'm answer. I was like, one. yeah, that's a good answer. I wear it a lot. I will say though, I think, so both the pitch cardigan and the Spenson pullover, I'm fairly certain that I didn't gauge swatch for. Like, I'm pretty sure, but I mean, both wild. of this is several years ago before I like really understood the importance of gauge swatching and so I kind of made them at a time when it was really hit or miss if things were turning out or not because of course it was like I wasn't getting gauge on half of my projects but those two turned out and I think that kind of added to why I was like especially proud of them but looking back I think my Spenson pullover is probably a little smaller than the pattern intended I think if I were to make it again and like properly gauge swatch it would have a slightly looser gauge but I'm not mad about the one that I have. Like I, I love it and I wear it all the time and it's the perfect fit for me. I think it's just slightly tighter than it had probably been intended. I would love to make that one. That one is very high on my priority yeah. list. I kind of want to make another one. Maybe but I'll touch up my hair a lot. I've been saying for <laughs> a couple years now that I'm going to make a second one and I haven't gotten around to it, but I should. And I don't know if I said it or not, but I did use Arbor for that one, which is a Brooklyn Tweed yarn. And I think the color I used was called Hammock. Okay, what's your third? My third one would be the Telemark 5010 cardigan by Sandus Garn, and I used Cascade Sportweight yarn. I think that's what it's called. I don't remember which one that is. It's the... We'll put a picture up, but it's <laughs> the one that's like stranded color work, and it has like a... Yeah, and I made it in white and blue. Oh, it's your first steeped project. Yeah, it's oh. got like an elaborate like motif down at the yes. bottom and at the top and at like the I know top exactly of the what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but then it's got the little like polka dots all the way through it. And to be honest, I don't wear that one that often. It's not a hundred percent like my day to day style. But yeah, I was just really proud that it was my first steeped sweater. So it felt like it was one of those things where I was really scared to do something and then I did it and it wasn't too bad. <laughs> So I'm just proud of the fact that like I was scared to do it, but I did it and it turned out. It does sit a little high on my collar, so if I were to redo it, I'd probably try to fix that somehow. Maybe start like the collar a little bit sooner. Um, but yeah, it's just a beautiful cardigan. Okay, so I think I have different, because I'm going to go off of kind of, I have two like that I just wear all the time and then one is like, I don't know, just special. Uh, I would actually rate this as one of my top three. I love that one. I just, That's very wearable. <laughs> if I was a cartoon character, this is what I would wear, and I would just wear it every single day. And I kind of do still wear it every single day. So um, I do have plans to make more of these. I think that it was just a really great sweater for me, and I throw it on with everything. Um, so I think I'm going kind of a little bit more on wearability, but I just really, really like this piece. Uh, I also, again, for the wearability, love my champagne cardigan. I just throw it on over everything. I wore it yesterday even to a baby shower for a dress. I wear it with jeans. I wear it all the time. Um, and I just remember being so infatuated with that yarn. It's a Moondrake yarn that uh, I think was like an exclusive colorway for one of our local yarn shops, Unwind. And I went in and I saw it and I didn't get it because we know that um, hand dyed, indie dyed can be expensive. And I just held on to that like, oh, I want this yarn so bad for months. And so when we did get it, I was like, oh, yes. Um, I just really like that knit. Um, I would say the most impressive knit though, would be my Melinda's dress by Vert Knit. That's a good one. It, I was part of the test group for that pattern and I had 
never seen a pattern like that before. I actually don't know what she charges for that pattern, but whatever she does is probably not enough because um, it, I mean, just the amount of detail and intricacy that went into that design. And then obviously it was a ton of work. It's a fingering weight dress. And so I put in a lot of hours, a lot of work, and then it fit perfectly. And I just felt so much achievement in that. Um, and so I would rate that knit very highly, even though it's actually probably one of my least worn, just because a knit dress, you know, it has to be a really specific temperature outside and occasion. And so I don't wear it all the time, but I'm just, I look back and I'm like, I'm so proud that I knit that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, those would be my top three. Two, two wearable and one just, yeah, I was like, wow, I did that. Somebody also asked, I think, what we do with knits that we don't love. That's a good question. Or older ones, because we have been knitting for a long time. Yeah. Or even just how we wear all of our knits, because we do tend to make quite a few. Uh, to be honest, like, not all of our knits get the same amount of love. Like, this is one for me that I don't wear. Yeah that often. I do reach for it occasionally, so I do keep a lot of my knits even if they don't get worn every single day. But there are a lot of times where, you know, if it's been a couple years and I haven't worn something, I'll donate it. Like, I don't really have a problem donating something that's not getting worn if I think someone else would like it. If it was like a completely wonky fail or something, I, would, I don't feel comfortable donating that, and so I'll just frog it. And sometimes if it's something that I, I do love the color, but maybe I don't like the fit or something like that. I'll frog that too. So it kind of just depends, but we don't necessarily like hold on to everything that we make. I just quite frankly don't have that much storage. I live in an old house and the closets are small and I don't have the capacity to keep absolutely everything. So like an example right now that I'm kind of toying with the idea of is I know it's like a really recent make, but recently I made the Artisan Cardigan by Sandis Garn in Double Sunday, held together with Tin Silk Mohair, both by Sandis Garn. I think in the same color that you're wearing too, this like it's almond color. color. <laughs> and I love the yarn and I love the color. And I like the cardigan too and everything. But you were just talking about the champagne cardigan. It's a really similar color. And yeah, they both is. are like kind of oversized boxy cardigans with like a V here and so they, they kind of fit the same bill in my wardrobe like I really don't need two boxy champagne color or um, almond colored <laughs> cardigans with the same fit though the difference is one is stockinette and one is like really textured but I don't reach for the textured one as often like every time I've needed one of those cardigans I reach for the stockinette version so I'm kind of toying with the idea of taking apart the artisan cardigan and turning it into something else not something that's not a cardigan <laughs> or if I did make another cardigan maybe doing like more of a, a crew neck so that way it would have like a different to me those yes. fit different bills like the things that I would want a v-neck cardigan for might be different than what I wear with like a crew neck cardigan or I might do like a pullover. Like I've been really loving the Esther sweater by Petite Knit. So yes, I think that would be a really be beautiful really use for the yarn. And it would still have that texture that I think is so beautiful for the yarn. It would just feel, feel like a different hole in my wardrobe. Not that I need to like fill holes, you know, like wear what you want, you know. Yeah. But I just find that like I'm not wearing that cardigan because it's similar to something else. And so I think I'm just going to reuse the yarn for something that maybe would be different enough that I would reach for it. Yeah. Yeah. But we've been knitting long enough and we have enough sweaters that while all of them are like special and sentimental, at the same time, I don't think we have the desire to hold on to every single thing that we knit and yeah I I don't mind getting rid of them yeah somewhat related and somewhat not related to like keeping knits categorizing knits um I've told Jessica this before I don't think I've ever shared it on the podcast but I mentally not like physically or anything but I, I mentally categorize my knits into three categories and uh they are my basics, like the champagne cardigan is a great basic. Love it. Uh, trendy pieces, so like the things that everyone is knitting. Like uh, earlier last year, I knit the twist loop tank. I feel like that's kind of a trendy piece. Like, is that going to be my most timeless knit I've ever made? No, probably not. But 
Um, and then my third category, which is my favorite, is what I call our funeral pieces. <laughs> because if I was to die tomorrow, this is not in a morbid way, don't take this bad, but like, if I was to die, I'd be like, please bring this to my funeral so that everyone can see how talented I was. <laughs> Um, like my poet socks, I'm like, wow, those are beautiful. <laughs> so those are how I categorize my knits. I don't know that I have categories for mine. I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> those are good ones, though. I would say that all of the things I've knit so far, I could probably fit into those categories. <laughs> yeah. And they can't overlap. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should make a Venn diagram. <laughs> yes. What meets in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the middle piece? Oh, I don't can't think of a knit I've done so far that fits all three of them. Now I'm going to be on the search. Like, what is my... Yeah. What, what fits all of them? What's the middle piece? I feel like it'd be hard to be basic and trendy at the same time. Yeah. That, that... Maybe not. I'm sure there's some examples out there. Well, like, petite knit is very basic and very popular. That's true. But does that make it trendy? No, maybe not. Because trendy would be not timeless. Like, I'll look back in a few years and be like, do I want to wear this? I don't know. I could see that, like, maybe, maybe like, the Ingrid sweater, because that one's kind of... I feel yeah. like right now we're having, like, a horizontal stripe moment, and I'm here for it. I love it. But I could see where that trend dies eventually, and then we'll look back and be like, oh, that was part of this era. I could see that. At point in time. But I hope that it doesn't end, because I do love that trend. I do think there's something classic about it, so I don't know. Let us know what you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have knitting categories. What are they? What are they? <laughs> Another question that we got asked a few times would be, what's in your knitting bag? Oh, okay. Do you have, like, a list of items that you, like, always have in your, your knitting bag? So... I know that there's a lot of podcasters out there who have really beautiful collections of like different stitch markers and uh, needle holders and like different accessories. I am just not at a point where I have unlimited funds for everything that I would want in life and I tend to prioritize yarn where I put my money. So um, I have just very basic stitch markers. I do have the Chiagu. Chi Chiagu um, interchangeable needle set and that was an expensive purchase but no regrets because I will cherish that thing forever. Um, I don't know what else is in your... Um, I tend to have the same like basic items in yeah, my knitting Very minimal. Bag all the time. Oh actually I can go grab it real quick. Yeah go get it. So I'll usually have like just a tote bag, nothing fancy. This one I got for free at a hotel that I stayed at on vacation. Um, so like usually I don't go out of my way for project bags. I just somehow accumulate them. I've got a time. million totes. Um, I always keep tapestry needles. Oh, that's a good one. I've had these since probably high school. See, They're you're just good like at basic. keeping track of stuff. I lose things all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I keep track of them, but I, I somehow I've had these same ones forever. And then, of course, I always have a ruler. That's a good That's one. Important. I have an 18-inch, which I like better. Yeah, I just have the regular 12-inch. It works. It gets the job done. And then... I always have my little scissors, and these are like little Fiskar, like elementary school scissors. But I used to have fancy scissors that I kept in my bag, and one time TSA took it when I was traveling, so now I have like the cheap little... That was little dramatic, I do <laughs> it, was, that. it was really upsetting. <laughs> they looked like little Eiffel Tower. Yeah, they were or so cute. Eiffel Tower, yeah. So ever, that was sad. It was sad. So ever since that, I'm, then I'm like, no, we have little safety scissors. TSA has not taken these. I've had these for several years now. <laughs> okay, you're like, um, because I teach middle school and we'll do this thing where like if we give a kid a pencil that if they can give it back at the end of the day, we'll give them like trade them for candy or something because the, they lose their pencils so often. I'm like, wow, you've kept all of these things forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> I'm so impressed, right? <laughs> and then... I think the last thing that's in here that I just like always always have would be a notebook and a pen so I can write down notes. And what I tend to do is if if a pattern says like 
knit 50 rows, I'll write out like one, two, three, four, five, so, you know, until I get to 50. And then as I work the rows, I'll like cross them off. So I have all of these like random pages in my notebook that just have like scribbles in them as I cross out the numbers. So this notebook is just random pages of numbers and it doesn't make any sense after you've like finished working the project, but that's what helps me if it's one of those patterns where you have to keep track of rows. I just count and pray. That's fair. I can't, I can't count. If you like, if you ask me to count, like get to 50 rows, I'm, ne I'm gonna have to recount a hundred times and I don't wanna have to sit and like count all of my stitches every single time. So that's what I do instead. I feel like it's the type A versus type B personalities. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so nothing fancy. And then I don't have stitch markers in there today. Usually not gonna lie, I don't even use like fancy stitch markers. I'll use like paper clips. Like this particular project, yeah. I'm using a little paper clip as like a little, um, shoot, it's not gonna, it's not gonna focus. As like a marker to show how far I've gotten a progress marker in beginning of round because now I know when I get to this needle it's like the beginning of the round yeah yeah so another fun question going back to um, some of the stuff we were talking about before just like um, personal stuff a question that we got several times was what is it like to have a twin and do you have like any fun interesting oh, yeah. twin stories I always think that question is so funny because I'm like we don't know any different. What's it like to not have a twin sort of thing? <laughs> One of my favorite stories is the time that you met my manager. Oh yeah. This is at an old job. I'm not at this company anymore, but I had a manager and I'm sure at some point or another I had told him I had a twin, but like it wasn't like we were super close and like, you know, it wasn't like I was sharing pictures with him all the time or anything. So I don't know if he like fully processed, processed and registered yeah. it. And to be fair, like, it was the type of job where we both traveled a lot, and so, like, our paths didn't always cross every single day, and, you know, things like that, so, um, but he was really nice, I really liked him and everything, but one day he came up to me at work, and he was like, hey, I'm sorry, that was so awkward when I ran <laughs> into you on the, you know, at this place or whatever, uh, and I was like, what, like, I didn't see you, did you say hi, like, where, when were you there, when did, when did this happen? <laughs> Uh, and we were just so confused because he, in his mind, he was like, what, what are you talking about? Like, I just talked to you and I was like, I haven't seen you in probably it's, a week at this point. It's because he ran into me. And I don't know why normally I think I'd be able to process like, oh, he knows my sister. But in this moment, this man approached me so confidently that he knew me that I was like, I must know him. Like, he knows me so clearly. He introduced me to his family, his baby. I was like, we must know each other. So the entire time you're just standing there like, who is this yes, person? Yes, I was like, I was going through, I was like, every college class I've taken, like, did we have a class together? Did we work together at some point? Like, my brain was just like all rolling back, trying to figure it out. And it turns out I did not know him. But how he come, like, had he not approached me so confidently, I think that I would not have been as thrown off. <laughs> but he just, he I just went with it. I was like, yeah, we know each other. <laughs> but apparently I didn't pull it off enough. <laughs> yeah, because he was like, that was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I think I probably looked deer in headlights for a little bit. I was like, uh. <laughs> uh so, yeah. yeah. I feel like something else happened similar one time when you went to a party. Yes, one time... So you have a friend who you used to go to college with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't yeah. work together, I was thinking. Um, but she's just a really sweet, lovely person. And so we've all gotten like brunch together and hung out and stuff before. And so she invited us to this housewarming party because her and her partner at the time had just gotten a new house and they were really excited. Well, I guess you couldn't go, but we didn't really get the memo until I had already committed to going. And so I was like, I'll just go, it'll be fine. And I essentially went to a party with a whole bunch of college people that Jessica knew and I had never met before. And they did not know at the time that it was, I mean, I think they knew that you had a twin, 
Yeah. But like people all night were coming up and hugging me and stuff, and I was like, we don't actually know each other, but <laughs> we're very cool. Yeah, <laughs> they're still good people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I think they got a kick out of it too. Honestly, like they were like, this is hilarious. Yeah. So, um. So yeah, that was a funny one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's funny how like in our adult life, because I guess backtracking when we were in elementary school we had all the same classes together we really did everything and then we even up until college went to the same colleges together so i think the first time we like really had our lives completely separate was when we got jobs and so now having coworkers be like oh i didn't know you had a twin years after knowing them it's so funny to yeah. have that experience now <laughs> yeah when it used to be that i feel like we were like it feels like our circles used to overlap a lot more, and yes. as we've gotten older, they've, they've grown apart a little bit, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Good sometimes, but weird. <laughs> yeah. And on the same topic, too, a couple people asked if it's just us or if we have other siblings oh, or yeah. anything like that, and no, it's just us, yes. which I think is probably a good thing, because obviously if we had another sibling, like, we wouldn't have excluded them from anything. Like, we would have loved them and, and they would have been a big part of our lives too but I think it is different when you have so many like shared experiences like we were in all the same classes and went to all the same things and knew all the same people and, and I feel like when you're together all day every day for years like that it's just kind of a different relationship whereas like if we had had another sibling they wouldn't have been in that same stage like, of life stage of life yeah, yeah. so Cause they would have just been a little bit different that's what I do think is like very unique about our experience is like every major life experience really up until adulthood but even into adulthood has kind of been similar like our first day of school was together and like going to college together and like things that most people do on their own we've had really a lot of the same life experience and that's kind of special to like get to share all of like life's big moments yeah so just kind of different what from what non-twins i guess yeah <laughs> yeah on the flip side though it's like interesting to think about what it would have been like different yeah okay so people ask us a lot how we knit so fast or how much time we devote to knitting Personally, I do recognize that we knit a lot, but I do sometimes think that there is kind of a warped perception because since we're talking about our knits together, it's like we'll always have a finished object in every podcast between the two of us. Like one of us will have finished something and we have lots of, not lots of whips, but like even if we each have two, that's four whips that we're talking about every single time. And so... I do think that we're fast and we'll talk about how much time we spend knitting, but I do also think that sometimes just because there are two of us and we're both talking about our knitting, that there's this like perception that we're knitting a ton of stuff. Yeah, twice as much. Yeah, twice as much. Like, well, there's two of us. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, because like the same thing, like when we were just on Instagram, I remember our family would be like, you're always finishing stuff. And it's like, actually, I haven't posted in months, but Jessica has. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, just kind of like funny. <laughs> yeah. In general though, I don't think I knit that fast. Like I'm an English knitter and I think English knitters, we're, well we're both English yeah. knitters, in general are just not going to knit as fast as someone who's continental because they can just, the speed at which they go, yeah, is insane. But I do think we spend a lot of time knitting and I think that that adds to the amount of projects we can finish. I don't have like a set regimen like I never say like okay I'm gonna get this particular thing done today or I'm gonna knit this many hours like it, it all has to be organic and just fit with my schedule and things come up and things change like maybe I'll start the day and be like wow I have so much time and I think I'm gonna get xyz done but you know if, if something else happens and schedules change like I never get upset it's not like yeah. I'm gonna stay up late just to like get my knitting time in I, it's just what happens sort of thing so I don't have like goals or anything that I track to but in general if I don't have plans for the day like if it's you know I get off work at five most days and then I'll just spend the whole evening other than dinner and you know random things that come up you know feed the cats and make <laughs> some tea and 
pulled out that I'll usually spend most of my evening just knitting so I can usually get in like three hours a day probably and then sometimes on like slow Sundays it can be even more than that so yeah. I am in a class right now because we are both um getting our masters at the moment I'm it's, almost done yeah you're so close, so <laughs> so close. <laughs> I have a long ways to go <laughs> but I am in a class this semester that it just started but I think it's gonna deter or I think it's going to take away from my knitting time because it's a lot more intense than some of the other classes that I've taken so far. And so that's one night a week, but it's like a three and a half hour class. So I think for a couple of weeks, at least, my knitting is It'll probably going to be... Yeah, it's going to slow down. <laughs> See, I'm excited because I only have about two more months on my program and I think my knitting's going to pick up. Yeah, um, um, it'll be nice. One thing I think is also worth mentioning is that we are pretty tiny human beings and we're usually knitting maybe not always the first size but within the first three sizes of a pattern and I think that's also important to acknowledge because the smaller sizes do have less yardage therefore they're going to go quicker than some of the larger sizes and so I think that is also somewhat contributing to how fast we knit which is definitely worth acknowledging yeah but really I think what motivates me is just that I have so many things I want to knit that I'm like, I have to finish this so I can cast yeah. something else on. Same. Um, and I really don't like to carry too many works in progress. So I think three whips is about my max. Yeah. Anything more than that, and I start to get kind of stressed out about it. Yeah, yeah. me too. All right. Well, I know we didn't get to everyone's questions today, so we may do this again in the future. We definitely have a list that we're going to uh, keep track of and, and see if we can answer any future questions. But thanks for joining us today as we just talked through a few of them that we commonly get. It was fun to just sit and knit and chat, and I hope you got some progress done on whatever it is that you're working on. We always do love to hear what it is that you've been working on, if you can share that with us, and anything that you're excited about coming up this season. So yeah, thanks for joining us. <laughs>